The Valsalva maneuver is a very popular technique used in weightlifting and powerlifting. During this maneuver, the lifter closes their throat, which keeps air from escaping the lungs. Then they forcefully contract the muscles of the abdomen and rib cage, creating rigid compartments of liquid in the lower torso and air in the upper torso. The idea behind the Valsalva maneuver is that it increases trunk stability, which can help lift a heavier load. In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly what happens during the Valsalva maneuver, and we're going to bust a few myths in the process. Let's break the Valsalva maneuver into four distinct phases and talk about what happens at each phase. During phase one, which is when the lifter first starts to strain and forcefully exhales against the closed airway, the pressure inside the abdomen and rib cage increases, which in turn increases the pressure in all the blood vessels within this area. Compression of the heart's aorta will cause an immediate transfer of blood to the body's peripheral arteries, increasing both the diastolic and systolic blood pressure. When this rise in arterial pressure is sensed by baroreceptors, which monitor this pressure, it triggers the nervous system to decrease the heart rate and the amount of constriction within the vessels, which reflexively starts to lower blood pressure. During phase two, when the lifter continues to strain, we see these elevated abdominal and chest pressures reducing blood return to the heart by compressing the large veins that return blood to the heart called the vena cava. When this large vein is compressed, it also causes a back pressure in the peripheral veins, and this is noticeable when the lifter's jugular vein becomes distended. With less blood returning to the heart, left atrial pressure will decline, leading to further reduction in both systolic and diastolic blood pressures. Cardiac output decreases by about 50%, Meanwhile, pressure in the veins continues to build. Later in stage two, we see our baroreceptors again, sensing the decreasing blood pressure, and they in turn signal the nervous system to increase heart rate. The increased heart rate compensates for the reduced volume of blood being pumped out by the heart, and this prevents further reduction in cardiac output. Stage three occurs when the lifter releases their strain and the pressures within the abdomen and chest return to baseline. The aorta refills its volume, and the vena cava resumes its normal size. These effects lead to a fast and significant drop in the arterial blood pressure, and this is where we get to bust a myth. Many people believe passing out during the Valsalva maneuver is due to high blood pressure, but it's actually due to low blood pressure and a reduction in oxygen to the brain. With the last phase of the Valsalva maneuver, called the recovery phase, we see a continual rise in vein pressure, allowing the heart to fill with blood, which improves cardiac output by as much as 40% higher than baseline. Arterial pressure continues to recover, and due to a high blood volume ejected from the left ventricle to the arteries that are still somewhat constricted, we see an overshoot of the blood pressure above baseline values. This overshoot again activates the baroreceptors to reflexively lower the heart rate. Eventually, the heart rate and systemic pressure reach their baseline values with a complete system recovery back to equilibrium. One study in the 1990s showed the average time for both systolic and diastolic blood pressures to return to the baseline after a 15 second Valsalva maneuver with a strain pressure of 30 millimeters of mercury was about 25 seconds. Increasing the strain pressure to 40 millimeters of mercury, the recovery took about five seconds longer. 